and Mary, who is pregnant, on the highway to Bethlehem, who asked Joseph to take her down from the ass, meaning a donkey. They used to call him ass at the time. And Joseph took her down, and he found there a cave, and let her into it. Chapter 13, verses 1, it says, And leaving her and his sons in the cave, Joseph went forth to seek a Hebrew midwife in the village of Bethlehem. Chapter 16, verses 10 says, Then a bright cloud overshadowed the cave. Chapter 15, 9 says, So the wise men went forth, and behold, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over the cave. From the first gospel of the infancy of Jesus Christ of the Apocrypha, chapter 1, 6, says, And when they came by the cave, Mary confessed to Joseph that a time of bringing forth was come. And she could not go to the city, go on to the city, and said, Let us go into this cave. These are the books that were rejected. And when the time of the circumcision was come, excuse me, Namely, the eighth day on which the Lord commanded the child to be circumcised, they circumcised him in the cave. This is chapter 11, verse 1. Matthew's chapter 11, verse 9 reads, quote, When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over the young child, where it came, till it came and stood over where the young child was. There is no mention of cave, in, but in chapter 211, it says, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. To understand why they were born in this cave, I will quote from the book, The Mystical Life of Jesus, chapter 6, titled The Birthplace and the Magi. The Rosicrucian records and the Essene records have always contained the statement that the child of Mary and Joseph, Joseph was born in a Essene grotto on the highway near Bethlehem. He says, I have previously referred to the fact that the Essenes possessed certain rescue houses and hospices in various parts of Palestine. And three of these were grottos. He says, I recently visited these Essene grottos near Bethlehem and carefully investigated the size, shape, and arrangement of the rooms. The large reception room in the center of the grotto, surrounded by many private rooms, immediately indicates that it was either a very large home, much larger than any home commonly found in Palestine, or a public place of some kind. The stone stairway descending to the rooms, the careful carving of the stones, the decoration still visible in many places, the care which with, with which the rooms were finished, and the arrangement of the rooms leading off from the central room. One is impressed at once with the fact that this was undoubtedly a very well-planned and cared-for hospice of some kind. Even today, the rooms are dry enough, warm enough, and comfortable enough for pleasant living. And when one sees the crude structures above the ground that are usually provided for cattle, when any structures are provided at all, it is quite evident that no one would have gone to such trouble and expense for the sake of providing a stable for cattle. For several weeks prior to the birth of Jesus, close, I think I read this before, but our close and careful tabulations had been made regarding the movement of the star and the probable time of its ultimate significance. Those who had been selected by the mystery schools to journey to the place of birth and represent the Essene Brotherhood and the Great White Brotherhood had started on their way to Palestine several weeks prior to the time of the birth. We find from the records also that these Magi knew the story or the selection of Mary as the preordained mother of the Holy Child. The location of the home of Mary and Joseph in Palestine and the arrangement that Mary should go to the grotto hospice or of the Brotherhood near Bethlehem for the, for the delivery of her child. The records state that Mary was at the hospice three days before the child was born, awaiting the important hour. Webster's def definition of grotto, a cave, a, or natural cavity in the earth, as in a mountain or rock, an artificial cavern decorated with rock work, shells, etc., constructed for coolness and pleasure. Adonis of Syria, Krishna of India, and Mithra of Persia, all said to have been born of virgins, were said to have been born at the same grotto that Jesus was born in. 
showing they were associated in some way with some organization. There is ample evidence to show that the teachings of Jesus that were given to the disciples and others, the amount numbering 120, were not given to the multitude. If we turn to Mark chapter 4, we find Jesus had been speaking to the multitudes by the seaside. He taught them many things by parables. In verse 10 and 11, we read, quote, And when he was alone, they that were about him with the, t with the twelve asked of him the parables, and he said unto them, Unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to them that are without all these things are done in parables. It can also be found in Matthew's chapter 13, verses 10 and 11. I read this before from the from front part. When I read Mark, chapter 4, 10, 11, I got the impression that there were more than 12 alone with Jesus. Remember he said when he was alone that they that were about him with the 12, there were others besides the 12 that were around him that were students of his teachings. And it's mentioned he had 120 students, including his brothers and sisters. And where is this uh, documented? I'll, I'll get to it. Okay. Yeah. Definition of, oh, I just said, okay. That there were more than 12 with his privacy, I said. Chapter 113, oh, if we turn to Acts, chapter 113 to 15, it reads, quote, And when they were come in, they went up to an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Phillips and Thomas, Barth, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zealots, and Judas the brother of James. They continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the, with the women. They had women in the group. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brethren, his brothers. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of disciples and said, in quote, quotation, the number of, of names together were about 120. It is said that Jesus was accustomed to referring to the male sex, 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 and particularly his disciples and apostles, as his brethren, but never with the intention of meaning his brothers in flesh and blood. But if we turn to Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, we find that one of Jesus' followers is using the word brethren in a manner which cannot be interpreted in any other but the correct manner. It reads, quote, This person is saying, Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas, and his sisters, are they not with us? Remember, according to the Gospel of the Protoevangelion, chapter 8, 13, verses, and chapter 12, 2, and 13, 1, there is mention of Joseph's two sons. This was before the birth of Jesus. There is ample evidence to show that the teachings of Jesus were given privately to his 120 students and that they met in secret using passwords, signs, symbols, and other tokens by which they recognized one another. If we turn to Luke, chapter 22, verse 7 to 14, we read, quote, Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye entered into the city, there shall be a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in, and you shall say unto the good man of the house, quote, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat? The Passover with my disciples. That was the thing that they had to say in order to be recognized to be able to, to come together in, in a group without any strangers coming in. There were also times when he was to look for a man whose left foot was unshod, presenting a strange appearance, or who, it's all in the Bible, or whose garment was so arranged that his left knee and lower <laughs> limb were bare. This is somewhat used in some of the orders today in initiating Or whose garment was so torn that his left breast appeared bare. That means some part with his, his left breast would appear bare where the other was covered. These are all signs for them to come to this place and be recognized. Oh. 
In each instance, the peculiar dress, condition, or action of the important guide was not only uncommon, but significant in accordance with ancient symbology relating to characters of the old secret schools. In Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 47, we find that during the Passover feast, Mary and Joseph could not find Jesus. After three days of seeking, they find him in the temple asking and answering questions from the doctors, but they don't say what the questions were. If we turn to the Gospel of One, Infancy of the Apocrypha book, chapter 21, verse 2 to 21, we find out what was being discussed in the temple, but you won't find it in the regular Bible. Was this one of the books that was rejected? Yes, it reads, While in the temple, a certain principal rabbi asked him, Has thou read books? Jesus answered he had read both books and the things which were contained in books. And he explained to them the books of law, of precepts and statutes, and the mysteries which, were con which are contained in the books of the prophets, things which the mind of no creature could reach. A certain astronomer who was present asked the Lord Jesus whether he had studied astronomy. The Lord Jesus replied and told him the triangular, square, and sextile aspect, their progressive and retrograde motion, their sizes, and several prognostications and other things which the reason of man had never discovered. There was also among them a philosopher, well-skilled in physics and natural philosophy, who asked the Lord Jesus whether he had studied physics. He replied and explained to him physics and metaphysics, also those things which were above and below the power of nature, the powers also of the body, its humors and their effects, also the number of its members and bones, veins, arteries, and nerves, the several constitutions of the body, hot and dry, cold and moist, and the tendencies of them, all from the Bible, from these books that were rejected. How the soul operated upon the body, what its various sensations and faculties were, the faculty of speaking, anger, desire, and lastly the manner of its composition and dissolution, and other things which the understanding of no creature had ever reached." Unquote. These teachings of Jesus were the pearls and could not be cast among those not ready and prepared to receive them. According to the book, The Mystical Life of Jesus states that the ultimate passing or transition of the great master, Jesus, is recorded in the ancient records as having occurred peacefully and in the presence of the brethren of, his, of the brotherhood in the monastery at Carmel, and that his body remained in a tomb for several centuries, but it was finally removed to a secret sepulcher, I guess how you pronounce it, guarded and protected by his brothers, unquote. One of the most celebrated and most frequently quoted Christian writers of the ancient bishops, Irenaeus, declares upon the authority of the person called the martyr Polycarp, who claimed to have got it from St. John and all the elders of Asia, Asia, that Jesus the Christ was not crucified, but that he lived to be about 50 years old. According to the Encyclopedia of Catholic History, St. Irenaeus, 130-200 A.D., was Bishop of Lyons, considered the first great theologian in early Christianity. He was probably born in Smyrna, where he listened as a boy to the magnificent preaching of St. Polycarp. St. Polycarp, 69-155 A.D., was Bishop of Smyrna and, and Martyr, one of the most important figures in Christian Asia during the second century. Polycarp is considered an intermediary between the apostolic age and that of the patristic. patristic. St. Irenaeus, for example, wrote that Polycarp had known St. John and others who had actually seen the Lord. This is also taken from the Encyclopedia of Catholic History. Again, almost finished, again from the book. The Mystical Life of Jesus reads in the Illustrated Weekly of India, July 7, 1974. The following caption underscored a photograph of an ancient temple. The tomb of Jesus, Serenagar, 83 years ago. Mirza Ghulam, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, declared that Christ was not crucified and resurrected as believed by the Christians. Nor did he ascend to heaven, to the heavens where he is still alive as believed by the Muslims. I think this is uh, Ahmad Kudyani or something like that. Ahmed Kadani. Kadiani or something like that. Yeah. Ahmed Kadani. Yeah. Now in the Quran, it's called Al Nisa verse one fifty seven. It says, And they killed him not, nor did they 
nor did they cause his death on the cross. That's in the Talmud. <clears throat> a Punju, a Pun, Punjabi prophet supported his claim with research into old texts and its own interpretation of the Quran. He tried to prove that Christ escaped crucifixion and came to Kashmir, where he died at the age of 120. Nehru, in his glimpses of world history, writes, quote, all over Central Asia, in Kashmir, in Ladakh, and Tibet, and farther north, there is a strong belief that Jesus, or how they call him Isa, traveled there. There is nothing improbable in his having done so. Sixty-three ancient scrolls encased in resin and buried for twenty years, said to have been discovered at the burial cave of Jesus, was translated from Aramaic to German and English. It was put into a book form titled The Talmud of Emmanuel. In it, the editor says, Jesus traveled to northern India and that his mother died when Jesus was about 38 years of age. It goes on to say that Jesus, when Jesus was about 45 years old, he married a young and pretty woman who bore him numerous children and that he settled down like any normal head of a family in today's Singharia Srinagar in Kashmir, India and that he died at the age of between 110 and 115 of natural causes and was buried in Serenagar. In a book titled Bloodline of the Holy Grail, it claimed that Jesus married Mary, Mary, <laughs> married Mary Magdalene and that their first child or a daughter was named Tamar, T-A-M-A-R. Their second child, a son, was named Jesus and that their third child, a son, was named Joseph. The book also claimed that Jesus died naturally and was buried at Serenagar, Kashmir, India. And I mentioned the lady who also told me. Jesus, in the book, The Mystical Life of Jesus, written a long time ago, and I think it, was in, it came out in, what, you got time? Yeah. In short, it says that Jesus visited Jagannath on the east, this is from the unknown parts of his life, that he visited Jagannath on the east coast of India. Its present name is Puri. It was the center of pure Buddhism. It, he remained a little over a year. His teacher was a person by the name of Lamas. He made a stop at the valley of the Ganges with a, with a several month stay at Benares. There he studied ethics, natural law, languages, and other subjects. There he took a short course in the Hindu method of healing under a person by the name of Yudraka, who was reputed to be the greatest of the Hindu healers. After a visit to other parts of India, he returned again to the monastery at Jagannath, where he remained for two more years. He was appointed a teacher in a small town called Kadak. After he completed his studies of the Buddhistic teachings and the Hindu doctrines in India, he received some manuscripts from a Buddhist temple in Lhasa, sent by Meng Tis, who was considered the greatest of all the Buddhist sages. After leaving Jagannath, his journey took him westward toward Persia where in the city of Persopolis, arrangements had been made for his further studies. This was one of the ancient cities of the kings and the center of the learned magi of that country, who were named as Hor, Lun, and Mur. One of these magi, a very old man, was one of the three magi who had visited him at the time of his birth. Great homage was paid to Joseph, his name at that time, by these magi and by the priest of the temple. There were they were his instructors and his students. For it is recorded that at the close of each day when the instructors had finished the day's lesson, they asked him to become their teacher and inform them of the higher principles which he seemed to comprehend through inspiration. This is where he taught the importance of entering the silence through meditation. After a year spent in Persia, he and his guides proceeded to Euphrates. Here he contacted the greatest sages of Assyria, and the Magi from other lands who came to see him and hear him speak. He spends considerable time in the cities and towns of Chaldea, and in the land between the Tigris and Euphrates. From there he traveled to Greece, where he came in contact with some of the Athenian philosophers and was under the personal care of a person by the name of Apollonius. I guess some they call it short Apollo, who opened up the ancient records of Grecian law for him. He then sailed from Grecian laws to Alex, for Alexandria, Egypt. He was taken to Heliopolis and settled in a private home arranged for him, having special manservants, a beautiful place 
a beautiful garden and a personal attendant whose records as a scribe would place him today in the category of a personal secretary. The last and final stage of his preparation for the ministry was held in the chambers of the Great Pyramid. You can find that. <clears throat> Hear me. Um, for example. Is this it? Yes, yes. Do you want me to hold it yes, up? Yes, the camera? yes, yes. Show us. Where you uh, came from. Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the last and final stage of his preparation for the ministry was held in the chambers of the Great Pyramid where he first met John the Baptist. That is a picture of the things where they would go into and study. A lot of the, uh, Solon, a lot of the other great minds, when they were accepted, they would be in those grounds. That's the temple underneath. And they, they probably know it now, but they're not telling it. They, I think they researched and found it. Whatever happened to the secret teachings of Jesus? <clears throat> According to the book, The Secret Doctrines of Jesus, chapter 13, yeah, 13, titled The Preservation of the Secret Teachings, written by Dr. A. Spencer Lewis, it reads, quote, Several outer forms of organizations were gradually established to conserve and propagate the secret teachings of Jesus. One of these was the Order of the Rose Cross, the Rosicrucian Order, in whose charge was placed the preservation and practice of of the scientific, spiritual, and divine formula of the great school. Another was the semi-monastic order of Martinism, the Martinist order in whose charge was placed the preservation, practice, and teachings of some of the purely religious teachings of Jesus Christ. Today, <clears throat> throughout the world, these two organizations operating under slightly different variations of name to conform to the linguistic and other distinctions of each country but adhering to the ancient rules and dictums of the International Council of the Great White Brotherhood, are carrying on the unaltered purposes of the secret school established by Jesus. Whether neither of the organizations constitutes a church, in the sense generally applied to that word in these modern times. Nor do they seek to supplant the established churches of any creed or land. Their work is that of supplementing the work of all churches and religious movement, movements by teaching and establishing those doctrines, truth, and eternal principles which have been eliminated from or modified in the arbitrarily made systems of religion existing throughout the universe. The Rosicrucian Order is a non-sectarian worldwide fraternal organization. It traces its origin to the mystery schools of, or secret schools of learning established by the reign of Tutmos III, about 1500 B.C., in Egypt, from Egypt, the secret teachings of the Brotherhood spread into Greece by Solon. Now, if you want to find this out, you can go to the, to the encyclopedia. You might have to look in several of them. They will tell you how Solon was from the Egyptian mystery schools, how he traveled there and then brought things back in to the his Bible? country. No, this is in the dictionary. Oh, the dictionary. Okay. Yeah, you can find it in the dictionary. You, have to, you might have to search to a good one, I guess, but it's there. Okay. But I've seen it. Into Pal it was brought into Palestine by Solomon, and into Italy by Pythagoras. It eventually spread into France, Germany, Switzerland, and England. It was first established in the United States in 1694. Its teachings include such topics as the mystery of time and space, the human consciousness, the nature of matter, perfecting the physical body, the effect of light, color, and sound upon mind and body the ancient philosophy, development of will, human emotions and instincts, and their relation to personality. All these things are taught in this order. And like, if you want to look it up, look up um, the Confraternity of the Rose Cross. The Rose Crucian Order, uh, I've been a member now 50, go, almost going into my 53rd year. And the order has went through a change. And like all organizations, once they become a masonry too, the same thing. I'm a mason, I'm a Rosicrucian, I belong to several others. But when they get large, with many different kinds of people in it, the material body, which is the buildings and the, the offices and things like that, begin to sort of go astray. People want changes, they want to do this, they want to do that. But the soul of the order, the teaching, that's the soul, that eventually has to leave the physical body, because the physical body has corrupted itself. I guess, I don't know if that's the right word to use. It's just like the human body. The soul within is pure. 
Once the body gets old and worn out, we can no longer use it. We get out of it. The soul is that higher intelligence. The teachings are those teachings by the masters. And they moved away from um, Amor, ancient mystical order, Rose Crucis. They'll do good in, in whatever way they do. They'll do their good. But the main teaching, the, that which was handed down by the great masters, is still intact and protected by another organization. That was their purpose, to protect these things in case things like this happen. Of course, it happens throughout, throughout the centuries. Organization gets big, and it has to move away from that. Leave whatever it had as a teaching to help mankind up. But then it goes into another place. Get, gets another body. Um, that's about it. Now, that uh, was a long... Thank you for your patience. <laughs> it was a long lecture, and I know our viewers are... Uh, it's a lot of information to take in. But um, there's a lot of questions to come out of it because yeah, uh, I hope so. I mean, for a lot of Christians and mm. a lot of uh, Jews mm -hmm. um, and other you know religions yep. and a lot of this is um, they would they would be uh, questionable towards yes. you you know oh, yes. how oh, would yes. you how would you answer some of this saying that if it's not some people say, if it's not in the Bible it's not the truth. Whatever is in the Bible is the truth. As I said, how before, do you how do you answer that to? Uh, as I said before, all the religions stem from the ancient mystery schools. All of them were given certain things so the people would grow. So let's, let's do a timeline <clears throat> for our viewers. Mm. Uh, maybe that can be a little easier. Mm. Now, when the Bible, uh, the life of Jesus, mm. how far back does the order go before the life of Jesus? Go back to 1500 B.C. 1500 B.C. That's 1500 yeah. years, bef 1500 years 1500, yeah. Before he was born. Yeah, the order. It, 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 the name Rosicrucian was not used at that particular time. But their sacred symbol was always a cross with a single red rose in the center. I have it on the wall. It is symbolical. It, no, it's, it's a symbol of man's trials and tribulations that he goes through through air, earth, fire, and water. These are, these are the elements, the four elements. We encounter these things and we have to go through it. But in going through it, if we do the right thing, that divine soul within, the body evolves to be able to express the divine soul within. That's the purpose of these teachings, to help mankind to grow. The body become more refined in sync, if you want to use the term, with the soul within. Right now, we out of tune. Way out of tune. <laughs> so why, why do you think that the life of Jesus mm. Is different uh, from what you've uh, lectured, l learned, and lectured, and what's mentioned in other books compared to the Bible itself. Well, the Bible has been tampered with. I mean, the powers that be don't want mankind to grow. They don't want them to know things that they don't know. They're they, they're only interested in money, power. They don't want you to know more than what they know. Then they can't control you. They can't control me now. <laughs> we know we know that <laughs> they can't control me now and you like I said I I would go up against a wall and and it, if they said you have to go to war I said I'm not going to war well we're gonna put you up against the wall firing squad put me up there I hope just hope, hope just hope it don't hurt too much well I think you're a little too old, a little too old. <laughs> yeah I know people say that <laughs> you, say, well, you can say that now yeah. but it's true I know I know what I would do now yes you know but I would, like I said I hope the pain wouldn't be long. It'd be quick, and I'd get out. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of information. I mean, uh, it's a lot of years of research, a lot of reading, a lot of uh, investigating and, and studying. And, um, I mean, given this lecture in the past, mm -hmm. uh, what obstacles have you run across? Oh, I was asked to give by a friend of mine when I worked with the Transit Authority, I knew a guy who was a conductor. We both retired. And I used to go to a bank up on Hillside Avenue. I found he was a, 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 a guard, you know, the police. What do you call a guard in the bank? Security guard. Security guard, right. And we got to talking. We talked about the jobs and so forth. He asked me what I was doing. And I told him I was doing this and that. And I give lectures. And he wanted to know. And I said, I give lectures on Jesus and things. He said, he said well, look, I'm, a, I'm the, what do you call, a, a, a deacon or something. Of, excuse me, like bug flu my nose. Of, uh, of Floyd Flake's church. Mm. Floyd Flake was, you know, you know, I think a lot of people have heard about Floyd Flake. Floyd Flake. <laughs> Floyd Flake? <laughs> what did I say? Is that right? Floyd, Floyd Flake. Flake. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting mixed up. Beats me. No, 
But he asked me if I would give a talk mm -hmm. on the life of Jesus. And I said, sure. So he arranged, I think he called me and told me what day he would like me to give. It wasn't at the church, it was at a Christian school. Mm -hmm. Floyd Flakes Christian School. And um, I went there and, and I started giving the talk. And one person got kind of angry. He was sitting in, sitting, he was one member of the church. Yeah. He got a little angry and he stood up and, 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 and sort of got like, um, he didn't like the things that I was saying because in, in his thing, that wasn't so. Jesus lived to be, he died on the cross, died for man's sins, and all these things. And he didn't like that. So he got kind of kind of loud at me. But the friend said, look, look, I'm not going to have this. I invited him. Give him due respect. If you don't believe it, if you don't have it, just, just don't go along. But don't, you know, give him due respect. So what was his, his main issue was uh, what you were saying. Yeah, like what I was saying from this book. Kind of contradicts. Yeah. What he had learned yes. from uh, the Holy Bible. Yeah, from and from church. But they, from church. See, he can't say he learned from the Holy Bible. Most people don't read the Bible. Mm -hmm. They let somebody else read it to them. The reason they can't, they don't read it because they can't understand it. And I can understand that. When I, like I said, when I first read the book and came across this scene about David cutting off all these foreskins from these dead soldiers, I read it. In my, I was at home. My wife was at work, and I was reading. I said, "Oh, I said, no, this can't be." I, I couldn't. I couldn't imagine this being said in the book, and I called my wife about it. She said, "Yeah, that's what it means. Foreskin, foreskin. You know, here's a man cutting off two hundred foreskins off of dead soldiers, laying this in the Bible. Cutting off all these dead, pulling it out, cutting it, maybe, taking the foreskins, putting them in a the bag. Maybe that was his fetish. But <laughs> King Saul, and, and then when he came back, he only wanted one hundred. Uh, uh, David cut off, according to the Bible." 200, mm -hmm. right? And brought him back to King Saul to win favor of his, of his daughter. Another thing was, he, oh, it, this is why people can't read it. Mm -hmm. People cannot read that book because, it, like my grandfather said, it's a mad dog. <laughs> he couldn't understand it. He'd read it, but he couldn't. a lot of things he just couldn't understand. So coming, uh, wrapping up the video, coming to uh, closure... Uh, what would you say to uh, our viewers out there, you know, who uh, who have read the Bible and the Talmud and other, you know, religious books mm -hmm. or, or things about Jesus, or even those who don't know much about the Bible and mm -hmm. uh, Jesus? What what would you say to our viewers? The only thing I can say, except nothing of what you hear, as they say, and only half of what you see, you'd be surprised what's out there controlling the minds of the people. They don't know it, but there is a, 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 a scheme of, of somebody's doing this to can keep the minds of people under their thumb. So search. Don't accept anything. I mean, if you want to know, go research. It's out there. But you got to put, like they say, you put one step forward and some other steps will come toward you, however they say it. I forgot how they say that. But I did it. I did it, maybe because I was my experiences. But, um... I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. So, in this lecture that you mentioned that Jesus lived to be an old man mm. um, and uh, didn't die mm. 